Hello everyone, it's Dave from Austin Eats. Last time we tackled margarita pizza made with fresh buffalo mozzarella and fresh basil and did it in a wood-fired oven. Well, it's time to mix it up and say, let's do pepperoni. Nothing better than a pepperoni pizza except maybe a mushroom goat cheese and basil pizza. Or if you really wanted to take that up a notch, well, let's just add, say, sun-dried tomatoes to it. Why not? And of course, we're going to build all of these and cook them in a true wood-fired oven. Now, this is an oven that will easily heat to about 900 degrees, and that is just perfect for cooking beautiful, beautiful pizzas. Now, let's get started. I'm a big believer in using the right tool for the job. So having some dough tubs and pizza cutters and pastry blades on hand is great, but the really the most important tool in my kitchen are the two scales. Now, when you're doing something with dough, and that could be baking bread or making pizza, weighing is your best friend. It's much more accurate than using, uh, say, measuring cups. You're gonna get consistent product time and time again. And why do I have two scales? Well, the one on the right is a 500 gram scale with a 10th gram accuracy, and that's great for things like flour and water, but not so good when I'm measuring small amounts, like a gram and a half of yeast. For that, I use the smaller 200 gram scale that has a capacity of one one hundredth of a gram. To me, the difference is worth it, and these, well, they're frankly just not that expensive, but they make a big difference in the quality of your product. So I suggest getting both. They're, you'll use them again and again. Now, the other thing that's really important is to have the right product. So I'm a big believer in the Caputo brand products of flour and yeast. These come from a mill right outside of Naples. And the, there's, there's really two products that I use frequently. Number one is the pizzeria brand of pizzeria style flour on the left. And this flour can handle a 900 degree oven. It is designed for it and works just beautifully in my wood fired oven. If, however, I'm making a pizza inside on a pizza stone, well, then I'll use the type double zero flour. That flour it can handle and is designed for a lower heat, like a five or a 600 degree pizza stone, and is not something that you want to put in a wood fired oven. If you use a standard flour or a, or a type double zero in a wood fired oven, you're going to be cleaning the oven. Trust me. The other thing that I use is the Caputo brand yeast. I could probably use any good commercial yeast, but I figured, why not? The other important component are the tomatoes. I use only San Marzano tomatoes out of Italy. So these are only grown in Italy. You can get them in 28 ounce cans in most major markets. I throw a can of these in a blender for a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds with a teaspoon and a half of fine sea salt. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful sauce. So let's get going. Once we've mixed the dough, it's time to get it ready for the fermentation process. So we gotta fold it a few times. And all I'm doing here is stretching the dough out, oh, maybe three times its length and then folding it onto itself in thirds. And then rotate it 90 degrees and do it again. And I do this three times until I've got a kind of a cohesive dough ball. Now I turn it with the seam side down and start pulling it toward me a little bit to sort of tighten that thing up a little bit. That is then gonna go into a dough tub with, that's been sprayed with a little cooking spray and it's gonna sit on the counter for a couple of hours. Covered, of course. Later on, we're gonna, after two hours, we're gonna cut that dough ball into three pieces and we're gonna do the same folding technique and to get them into individual balls. Now, one piece that I wanted to show you here is once you have those balls formed, it's really important to tighten these balls up. And to do that, Basically, I'm rolling them toward me with putting pressure on the back of the ball with my little fingers. I'm not allowing the seam to move. So the seam is staying, staying seam side down on the counter the entire time. By the way, it's a lot easier to do this on a counter that is not floured. Trust me. Once you've done this, the, uh, this will tighten the dough and make it a lot easier to handle after its fermentation process. They're gonna go back into a lightly oiled tub with a lid and then they go into the refrigerator overnight. This dough has so little yeast in it that means it needs a very long fermentation process and 24 even up to 48 hours is just fine for this. Spray them with a little olive oil and off they go. 
when it comes time to actually make the dough or to actually to make the pizza, I take a dough ball, lay it on the counter that's been dusted with flour, of course, and start pushing the, the air bubbles in the center out to the edges. This is going to uh, slowly expand the pizza and pre uh, preserve the crust. So you notice I'm not going all the way to the edge because I really want to have a crust on my pizza. I'm getting this down to, let's say, a quarter of an inch thick. And when I've got it pretty well uh, set and it's fairly round, now it's time to start stretching the dough. And I simply pick it up and without stretching on the, on the actual rim of that, I'm pulling the dough around. And gravity is doing its job in making the, the uh, actual uh, pizza dough larger and larger. So no need to throw this in the air. Um, it makes a big mess in my kitchen. I'm not allowed to do it. And then to, to finish the stretch, all you got to do is throw it over some cupped knuckles and very slowly stretch it to the desired shape. I get my pizzas all to about 12 inches. That's the size that I can work with quite easily. And if you stick your finger through it, well, just stick it back together. It's just fine. It's pizza and it will work just fine. By go. the way, no, this I'm is a great to... activity if you got yeah. little ones around. Children or grandchildren love to play with pizza dough. Why not? Right here, this is cat. big fun. Ready? Yeah. And stretch. Good job. Okay, put them back together. And stretch. Good job. One more time. Ready? And stretch. Good job. Let's check. Good job. Now, the other tool that I like to have is a meat slicer. Why? I slice my own pepperoni. I find it works a lot better than store-bought. I slice it nice and thick. In a 900 degree oven, I need the thick slice to keep it from curling, over curling, and then burning. So once the dough is ready, I put it on the pizza peel that's been dusted with some very coarse semolina flour. Put a little really good olive oil on it, sprinkle it all, or brush it all around, particularly the edges, because that's what's going to see the hot flame. And then I'm ready to start dressing it. For this particular pizza, it's a third a cup of our pizza sauce. That's nothing more than the San Marzano's and a little sea salt. Spread that around to the edge. You, wanna, you don't want to get too much sauce on your pizza. It doesn't need it. And if you put too much sauce on, well, it just makes it hard to handle. Then comes the cheese. For my pepperoni pizzas, I'm using a, a combination of about 50% uh, mozzarella, just low-fat mozzarella, and then I'm adding a little bit of fontina, about 25% fontina, and about 25% asiago. Now, before the final cheese goes on, I like my pepperoni to have a little, hit, little kick to it, so I sprinkle some red pepper on and some oregano. That's important, kind of adds up the flavor, kicks up the flavor a little bit. Then we go more cheese, get it all nice and spread around. Sometimes you can put a little bit of Parmesan on here or Pecorino Romano, not a lot because they tend to be salty and will uh, change the overall taste of the pizza. You're almost better off putting that on at the end. Once we've got the cheese on, now it's time to load it up with pepperoni. And I mean loaded up with pepperoni. You notice it's not completely covered with cheese. This will melt and give me just a perfect covering. If I put too much cheese on, well, it just kind of slides right off when I cut the, the uh, pizza up. So I like to use a little bit less cheese than you would think, but I use a lot more pepperoni than you would think. Why? Well, the pepperoni actually will shrink a little bit, believe it or not. This is going into a very hot oven, and I like to simply go round and round and cover as much of the surface as I possibly can. Now, you would wonder if the cheese will melt with that much pepperoni on it. Well, yeah, it will. It's not a problem at all. So keep the pepperoni going, get it loaded up, and that should be your final topping. You don't really want cheese or anything on top of the pepperoni. It kind of changes and destroys the look. Now, this is ready to go. So, check our oven. We should be nice and hot. Time to move those coals back, make room for a pizza. So, because those coals have been sitting, those logs have been sitting right on the floor of the oven where I'm going to put the pizza, that thing is nice and hot. Brush it all back. In goes the pizza. Almost all the way back to about, oh, six or seven inches from those embers. 
that's all. Go any closer, you're gonna burn it. If you're any closer to the front of the oven, well, you're not gonna get it really cooked through. Um, remember, the fire was just inside that oven. You can sort of see the, the cement rim, um, oh, about eight inches in the oven. That's where the fire was. So if I'm too close to the opening, well, the, the, the floor of the oven just isn't hot enough. Now you gotta watch this. There's no time to go get a beer or do anything else. You gotta watch it because this thing's gonna cook in 90 seconds. So after about 20 seconds, start rotating. And I put it right back in the middle. Now, I don't do two pizzas at a time. Why? Because it's too easy to burn one. Um, this takes 90 seconds, so you know I'm in no, no hurry. So I want to take it nice and slow, control all of the variables, like having it in the right spot in the oven, which I cook dead center, about six to eight inches from those coals, and rotate about every 20 seconds or so. Now you'll notice I'm using a very small pizza peel for that. Um, different from the peel that went in the oven. I like using a wood peel to put a peel, put a pizza in the oven, uh, coated with some uh, semolina flour. It acts like BBs and it just rolls right off. But for rotating this, this little pizza peel does the job. This is what uh, uh, professional pizza uh, restaurants use and it gives you just a lot of uh, agility really in, in turning this thing. Now you can see, now that it's about 180 degrees, we're starting to get some great golden color in that crust, and this pizza is almost done. Now, you gotta watch pepperoni's a little touchy. If, like I mentioned that I cut it thick because I don't want it to curl, over curl, and then burn the edges. I've done it too many times, so I cut it nice and thick, if I was doing this inside and on a pizza stone, well, I'd probably do it a little bit differently, at least not so much heat. But watch it, make sure you got that balance. The bottom looks darn good, the crust looks good. Out it comes, it's piping hot. Well, that back needed just another second or two. And now it's ready to come out. Put it back on the pizza peel, and you want it to set for just a minute or two. Otherwise, the cheese just oozes right out. But that is a beautiful pepperoni pizza. If you're gonna do mushroom, I do mine a little bit differently. I don't cook the mushrooms on it. I pre-cook my mushrooms. So chop them all up, and then very simply, I saute them very quickly on a stovetop, right in a saute pan with a little olive oil in it. Throw in the mushrooms, get those going. And at the very end, I add maybe uh, one or two uh, cloves of uh, garlic. Saute those up and then cool them down. The reason is that mushrooms can also burn. And the, uh, the advantage of having them cold is now they, they have to heat up quite a bit and they won't burn when they go in the oven. And the other reason to pre-cook them is mushrooms have a lot of water. So I don't want all that water going out on the top of the pizza. I'd rather have the mushroom flavor with a little bit of garlic and even a little, little bit of uh, sea salt on those. And that to me is the best combination. Um, it, it gives you all the flavor of the mushrooms without a lot of water. So again, rotate after about 20 seconds or so, keep it going. This fire, you notice I threw another log on. So this fire is really, really hot. So this may actually cook a little bit faster. You'll also notice I've cut it a little bit closer to the door this time. Why? Because of the fire that's now coming up over the back of the oven. It's, this thing is like a giant broiler. So that fire is actually arching up over the entire uh, back of the, and top of the oven um, and the, the heat that comes off that is just insane. So um, it's important to you know understand your oven and figure out how close you wanna get. So the bigger the fire, the further away you really wanna be. This thing's almost done. That crust is looking pretty darn good. So won't be but another moment or two here and that pizza is ready to go. Let's take a look. Uh, maybe another second. And the bottom, yeah, bottom's looking good. All right, back on the peel. And we got a pizza. Oh my God, that is 
is so good. We are brand new to YouTube and have a lot of great content coming up. It'd really help us out if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe. Links to the recipes can be found below. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time on another Austin Eats.